uh, in May uh, of this year, a long-standing problem um, that uh, has been plaguing us on RPT during the Rainbow Nets and other times was traced down. Um, maybe Dave, if you want to give a bit of a, a readout on, on what you did here, this is kind of a really cool thing. And Dave put together a 10-page article that actually made the RAC as well. Uh, so Dave, I don't know if you want to talk to that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was um, a part of the presentation I'm going to do about the uh, software-defined receiver system. We'll uh, explain this a bit. But yeah, back in May, um, I, I connected a software-defined receiver to the same antenna that UHF RPT used and was able to identify some signals that were sort of wandering around the band and then by uh, triangulating them using directional antennas and mobile use and uh, some driving by myself and uh, Ian there we were able to identify it to a, a recreational vehicle uh, that had a faulty uh, amplified TV antenna which was oscillating and uh, it was way out in pit meadow so it just shows you you know little things can uh, travel a long way okay um what should i bring up first so yeah going back to so first of all can you see that ian just give me a thumbs up if you can see everything yeah okay um so this is uh what did you call it the s the sdr farm um sorry there's one other thing i wanted to do here i need to share my sound uh, so the SDR farm consists <coughs> consists of five Air Spy SDRs, and uh, this one I'll explain in a bit. But uh, there's one for the 440 repeater, so that covers both the uh, the DMR RAG repeater and the RPT repeater. One on the 220 repeater. Uh, I believe this one goes to 702 V7 RAG. This one's for RPTs 146, and this one is actually connected to the RBY repeater antenna uh, down around 144. Uh, just a couple of close-ups. So as you can see, uh, each of these is fed from, I'll explain what a multi-coupler is in a quick second, uh, and then this one splits and splits into these two. This is actually being used as a APRS uh, receive-only gateway. Um, it uh, just ha happens that the 144.39 passes through this well, so with the amplifiers and everything we have, it allows us to uh, use this for multiple, pur multiple purposes. Um, we're using uh, very high quality, double shielded, silver braided coax RG400 for all of it so that we don't induce noise into the receivers. Uh, this is the back of it. Uh, one, one of the issues with the air spies is they use micro USB connectors, which can tend to be uh, pried off. So I built some strain reliefs, and you can see how they each just tie into a computer. This is a Linux computer. It's actually the IRLP computer on the site, and it allows us to, uh, to um, access these remotely. Okay, I'm uh, so just getting to what a multi-coupler is. So uh, it's basically um, like in the cable TV world called an amplified splitter, except for uh, so the signal comes in from the antenna or the duplexer, passes through what's a, a window band pass, is amplified with a low noise amplifier, power supplied by a 12 volt power, and then it splits into multiple ports. And then so up, so up at the site, uh, like this, for example, is the UHF one. So one part, one port of this goes to the UBC, or UBC, UHF RPT. This one goes to UHF RAG, which is the DMR repeater, and this one feeds to the SDR. And similarly, this is the one for RPT. So one goes to the repeater and one goes to the SDR. And any unused ports just have a 50 ohm load attached to them. Uh, just give me a second to bring up. So um, I don't know how many of you use SDRs or know the software SDR Sharp. Uh, it allows us to, so I can remotely connect. So this is, I'm actually live right now on um, uh, the uh, RPT UHF. So as you can see, I can... Uh, actually listen to what's going on there. I don't know if anybody who has a handheld, there, there you go. You can actually see somebody uh, keyed up with a live s signal on UHF on RBY, or RPT there, sorry. 
So uh, what this allows us to do is monitor the spectrum in real time. So this, for example, is the UHF one. I'm going to bring up the, this one's connected to the, uh, this one's a bit more, a bit more active. Um, all these spikes are actually noise that's being gen that's actually generated somewhere in the site. Uh, luckily, these spikes don't fall on any of our receivers that we have to use. Uh, some of the activity you're seeing here is uh, 144.39, the um, APRS frequency. So you can actually listen to the uh, packets as they come through. So there you go. So. I mean, it's not ex exactly exciting. Ex not exactly exciting to li listen to, but you get the point. So that so what this allows us to do is to track uh, interference uh, from the site in real time. I just want to uh, go back to the photos here for a second. So back in 2021, I believe uh, we used this to identify that uh, the 220 repeater, uh, RPT220, was throwing huge amounts of wideband noise. And this is connected to the uh, input of uh, 694. And as you can see, like when the 220 repeater was not keyed, there's almost no noise. And then when it was keyed, there's about an extra 10 dB of noise. So what, was ha what would occur is when 220 would come up, it would drop the signal level of everybody using RPT VHF. So this was solved by installing a bandpass filter on the output of 220. And some of the 220 users might remember that from the day uh, when the 220 repeater actually blew up because it didn't like all this reflected power being sent back at it. But uh, we were able to fix that. Um, this is another example where from my house, I was trying to track a source of interference just above the handband at 450. So I can watch it in real time uh, at RPT as well as either mo as mo mo as a mobile or another fix. So you can kind of use this based on the levels that you see to determine you know where it is. So this is my house in Linden Valley, and this is what was being received at Seymour. This happened to be a Fortis transmitter, a SCADA transmitter that went uh, that went bad. It was interfering both with the handband and the public safety band. Um, so the inverter. So as you can see on this uh, plot, this is the same um, VHF uh, SDR we just looked at. But you can see these kind of waves of uh, increased signal le 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 level, and this is the same idea. So I was able to track that down to the inverter that was on the site and uh, chose to replace it with this Yes Moto Master Eliminator. Uh, the only reason why I use this is because I use the same inverter at the site at UBC and it's been running for 12 years. Uh, I replaced some capacitors in this one and it's, as, as Ian says, it's kind of a stopgap to um, allow us to continue to operate. So we're drawing about 140 watts there, 13.8 volts, and just that's how it ties into the... Um, Power supply. So that's uh, all I had to say. Sorry, that might have been a little bit more than what you wanted, but I will uh, leave it at that. And uh, thanks, Ian, for setting me up with this microphone and stuff so I could sound uh, as professional as I do. <laughs> Go ahead. For sure. Any questions for Dave? And by the way, thanks, Dave, for all your work with us this year. It's uh, well, well, uh, well worth it for sure for everybody's benefit. Anybody on, on Zoom have any questions for Dave? We have a question. Uh, Jeff? <clears throat> uh, with, uh, Rick is asking, uh, do any SDR on Seymour allow two meter reception in SSB portion of the band? No. Negative. Uh, yeah, I mean, so we, we can receive, but are we just severely impaired down at 144? Or is it just the pass band of the... Um, yeah, 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 maybe for Dave. I, could... I, I, I can answer that. Actually, the, uh, the SDR that we do receive APRS off of uh, at 144.39 does also receive the single sideband portion of the band. And uh, I have tuned in and listened to some of the users there during some nets uh, from as far south as Seattle, actually. Hopefully that answers your correct question, Rick. And feel free to come off uh, mute there if you have any follow-ups. 